All right, so today I have the circuit lab for you. Uh, hopefully this can kind of, messing with this can help you uh, figure stuff out with the circuit worksheet and just understanding this all a bit better. You can actually even use this lab to sort of like check your work on the circuit worksheet uh, to make sure you're kind of doing things correctly. Um, so this kind of way of showing you how this works, um, I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, sort of the first one. I'm going to use different numbers. So you can't just copy what I'm doing. Um, but I'll at least show you kind of how this is supposed to work. So uh, the lab for this is uh, you should get something. Well, here's the thing if you just Google it, but I, I should give you the link for probably this part here. I'll give you the link. So you click on it here and you should get intro or lab. Just just go to the lab. Double click that. Okay. Uh, and then here. So here's what I kind of want you to focus on. Um, over here, you have th you have these two things here. So this, if you have this clicked, you'll see everything just sort of looks like it, you know, actually supposed to look like, right? Here's your batteries. Here's your here's what a resistor actually looks like. Um, there's also switches. There's a bunch of other stuff. There's a different kind of battery. There's fuses, even different resistors. Apparently, you can even like connect a dog for some reason. <laughs> Uh, because people are sick. I don't know. Um, but instead, uh, I want you to click on this. This switches it over to the symbols. Okay, so here's your battery. Here's your, again, your resistor and all that kind of stuff. So that's all you need. The other thing is uh, up here, um, for showing current, there's the electrons and the conventional current. Remember, so the electrons uh, actually show you the direction that, you know, electricity is actually moving, right? From the negative side of the battery through the circuit to the positive side. But the conventional is what we thought were, oh, it's positive charge, of course. So we thought it was positive charge moving from the positive side to the negative side. I actually want you to switch it to conventional because, again, that's just how the numbers are worked with now. And that keeps things useful. Also, check, click values on because it's good to have that. The, these things, you can just ignore those. You don't need those. Um, yeah, so let's go and start building uh, this first circuit here. Again, I'm going to use different numbers. So you can't just copy what I do. Um, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the same numbers I had before, which is five, ten, fifteen, and then I'll keep the battery. I think was the same. So here's my battery. Um, again, if you click it, then you can change the voltage, whatever you need. Uh, you know, I'll change it to ten just to have a nice number. Um, so I'll keep that there. Uh, let me see for the okay. It wants it facing so the long end is down. So you move it and then click this and drag it out. Oh, there. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, okay, so then. Each of these sort of connections here is a wire. So I'm gonna want, so connect it and then turn it. So you'll see it's connected because now it's like a gray circle, right? So connect that and then it wants me to connect another one. And then here next is a resistor. I'll have this one be the five ohm one. I'll keep that as the same. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, no, no, it doesn't matter because since the battery is different. So yeah, I'll just change this one to five. Can you type in here? No, you have to use the slider. Okay, that's a little annoying. But, okay, that one's five ohms. So then we want another wire. Whoops. And yeah, see if you just kind of click an end, you can like kind of cut it and then it disconnects it and then you can sort of reconnect it or move it around or whatever. Uh, okay, so there's that. And then single down, okay. And then it wants the you know, I'll have I'll change the have this one be the ten. I'll keep that the way it is, and so okay, you got to kind of move this around and kind of try to get this sort of straight, kind of finicky. Okay, uh, good enough. And doop, and then take this one. Okay, now we want this one. I'm gonna change up to fifteen, and then just two more wires. And that's boom. Okay, so now you see it definitely connected up because you can see that uh, there is a current flowing, so you know it's working. Um, okay, so this is the exact same type of shape and the exact same connections as this one here for the lab. It's just the numbers are different, so you can't just copy what I'm doing. Okay, so now it wants you to get the voltmeter. So that is this one. So you can just kind of drag this over here and just kind of leave it there. So it wants you to see, take the orange end of the voltmeter to point H. So H is the one that's below the battery there. Okay, so the orange end, touch it to 
H. This is what, if you had an actual circuit, this is what you would do, by the way. You'd take these two different ends and connect them to different pieces of the circuit. So then, touch the labeled points in turn with the black end, noting and recording the values in each case. Okay, so there's also a table down here that you can see. So, for example, junction point A, that means take the black end and put it on A, which is there. So it says 10 volts. Okay, so that makes sense. I go up 10 volts going, you know, there's a 10 volt change going through the 10 volt battery. That makes sense. So that would be the number you put in here. So I'm going to put that in 10 volts. Okay, so then, uh, so then it also says so you have VB minus VA is VAB. So that would be what you would put here, but I need to get B to do that. So now I'm going to keep the orange one there, but now I'm going to move this to B which is, where is B? B is, okay, before that resistor. 10, okay, it's still 10. So then VAB is gonna be this minus this, so it's going to be zero. So what that's saying is then it's saying, oh, from A to B, how much voltage did I lose? Well, I didn't lose any, right? I had 10 and I have 10 over here still, I didn't lose any going through this wire. So yeah, that's not a big deal there. Um, Actually, based on the direction of this, it seems to imply that how this is going through, that this is actually dealing with the electrons, because that seems to work. Okay, it is, doesn't matter which one you put for the current, I guess. So, whatever, I'll keep it as electrons, just so I'm actually following the order here. Okay, so now I want uh, the next one, which is C. 8.33. Okay. So now, my difference here for BC is going to be this minus this. Uh, so this one, again, negative doesn't really matter, but I'll keep the negative. So this would be point, uh, 1.67 volts. That means going from here to here, I lost 1.67 volts. Okay, so then D was here. Still 8.33. Which means going from C to D, I didn't lose any. And again, that makes sense, just going over the wire. Um, e... Uh, that's crossing here, let's see, 5 volts, so then what's my loss from here to here? That would be minus 3.33 volts, right, that lines up there, and then F, that's here, and 5 volts, therefore EF is 0, and then G, last one, which is here, I am at zero volts, so my change here is from zero to five, so it's minus five volts. So that's all in finding the volts. Basically it's saying you check what it is with through each section and this tells you how much do you decrease through each part. So for A, B, C, D, and E, F, which is, this is A, B, C, D, and E, F, these parts are just regular wires, right? So you don't lose voltage through wires. Okay, you actually technically do, but it's really, really, really small. Um, so yeah, you're basically gonna get zero. So that's telling you you're not gonna get anything. But as you cross these resistors, you do lose a certain amount of voltage. So this would be, for example, if we, when we were talking about the resistors and stuff yesterday in terms of finding the voltage for each resistor yesterday, uh, these would be the numbers you would get. Right? So for example, I would say, oh, this is R1, this is R2, and this is R3. That means this is V1, this is V2, and this is V3. Okay, I mean, it, you positive, negative, whatever, doesn't really matter, but you get the idea. So now the current, okay, you can then, let me let's take this off. And you're gonna need it for the other questions too. Now the ammeter, you can do this two different ways. This one, you actually basically, you have to kind of, uh, connect in the middle of a circuit. So you'd have to like snip this corner and just pl splice it in. You could do that. I think it's much easier to use this one. So this one, you basically just place this on the piece of wire you want. So the first one you want is the current for A, B. So that is again, between points A and B, right? So we have, yeah, use the ammeter to measure current, blah, 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 record, okay, yeah. So for A, B, that's it's gonna be right about here. So our current is 0.33. Okay, our current through this part is also 0.33. This part, B, uh, CD, is 0.33. For E, 
still 0.33. FG, or no, EF, 0.33. And finally, FG, is it going to be 0.33? Oh, imagine that, it's 0.33. So, that's sort of filling it out for the series circuit. Now, remember the rules for series circuits. The rules for series circuits was that the total current is the same as the current through each individual piece. Oh, look at what look at that it is and for the voltage it was that the total voltage as you go through Equals the sum of the voltages. Okay, so what's our total voltage? Our total voltage was because of the battery right the 10 volts so 1.67 plus 3.33 plus 5 that does equal 10 Okay, the idea is that well these are negative the idea is that sure you gain 10 But then you lose this then this and then this which means your total change is zero Right? You gain 10, then, right, you can see this here. You gain 10, and then you've lost a bit, you lose a bit more, and then you go to zero, and then you gain the 10 again, right? So it's a, it's a cycle of kind of gaining and losing, where your total change is zero once you go through the whole thing. And then you have some questions. So how many pass there for an electron to take through the series circuit? Well, I mean, kind of just look at it. And therefore, calculate the sum of the decrease along the path, compare this to the voltage increase in the battery. Yeah, and again, we can kind of, we already talked about how that works there. So that's sort of your thing for the series circuit. Oh, there's another question. How does the total current from the power source compare? Yeah, okay. So again, that's comparing the voltages and the currents. So that's kind of the main thing for this. Again, you will have different numbers because your resistors will have, you know, you're actually going to follow the image here where you have different numbers. So, you know, actually do the correct work um, and you can see what you get. So then here, then you kind of work on creating a parallel circuit. And same sort of idea. Notice the resistances are all the same as the previous one. Um, you'll have to probably disassemble. Yeah, you're going to have to disassemble everything. There, there is a limit to how many things you can have. You can have up to 10 resistors like on the screen at a time. And I'm not sure how many wires you can have at a time, but there is a limit. So you probably can't create like, you definitely can't create all three at the same time. Uh, that's probably way too much material. But anyway, um, so you'll create this in parallel, run the same, do the same kind of things with the uh, voltages and the uh, currents, do the same sort of math here uh, and figure everything out. And then uh, we have um, the complex circuit. So this one you can see, it's not all the same. This one actually is different from the one I showed you before, right? So the one I showed you before, that had two things in parallel, and then next to that was one thing in series. Here it's different. You have two things in series, and then next to that is a thing in parallel, right? So it's sort of like the series first and then the parallel, whereas before it was the parallel first, then the series. So it's a different sort of complex circuit, and you can kind of see how the how it works there for kind of figuring out how this is supposed to go. So, um, and you'll be able to kind of figure out, do these numbers actually make sense and I got some questions involving these, how this works there. So I encourage you to kind of mess around with this and just having different combinations that make things work. Uh, you could also try things without just the resistors. For example, if you do want to switch this to this here, one thing you can do is, uh, let me sort of delete all of these actually. And you can put in actual, you know, light bulbs. And and if you do this, hey, you actually get you get again. It's a really terrible show of, of light bulb, you know, glowing here. But you can at least kind of see the idea of how this works. Um, oh, the fact these are all ten. I think what and you, what you can do is so. For example, if I turn this one resistance up, does it show this? I'm not sure. Well, this shows this. Oh, well, okay, it actually doesn't matter, um, but, well, actually, hold on. Okay, you can see how the batteries, they're kind of changing their, yeah, see, this one's glowing more. Okay, it's, it's like a proportional kind of glowing. Okay, I see how that works. Okay, interesting. So yeah, again, you can mess with this and you can see how that works in that sense there. Um, the the glowingness with the with the uh, bulbs and stuff, you can kind of maybe figure out why some bulbs are glowing more than others. Uh, that's up to you to figure out. 
Um, and again, you can mess this with like in parallel and series. For example, if I actually had these to be in a parallel circuit instead of in series, they would be glowing differently than this as well. So again, there's a lot of stuff you can mess with this, and it's helpful to sort of uh, kind of figure out, you know, why uh, the numbers are what they are in a sense. But so yeah, this can be helpful. Hopefully, it can maybe help you figure out the uh, worksheet stuff a bit better if you want to kind of recreate these uh, in uh, the worksheet. You could see how that works. Again, for when you're doing the worksheet and stuff like that, you should fully do it in conventional current. That should make things work better. Um, anyway, so this at least give, give you an idea how to get this to work. Um, and yeah, hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, again, tomorrow, uh, I was originally, so yesterday, I was originally going to put together, I was going to have another example, like a rather complicated example to kind of build you up towards the uh, circuit number 10 in the worksheet. Uh, I ran out of time because, again, I was approaching an hour, and also I was recording this right before the Kahoot. So I was like, oh, I gotta finish this up. Um, so instead, tomorrow, I'm just going to go over that one big example that I had before. And it's a pretty, it, it's not as big as Circuit 10, but it's pretty big. So it's, it'll, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but it might take a while. So, yeah, we'll see how that works, and you can see how that all comes together. But for now, here you go with the lab. Um, you know, the link will be in the classroom, and, uh, yeah. So that's that.